Hey y'all, I'm Smitty. Welcome to Madison Dry Goods. We're getting ready to open up. We got some customers waiting. We got some baked goods out here. We uh, have these ladies here every Friday. So they make some good uh, baked goods, sourdough breads, and things like that. So, hey, how are y'all this morning? Hi. Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting. Every morning, we start out, well, depending on the weather. Today's a pretty day, so we get to leave the door open when we come in. But a lot of days when it's cold, uh, we have to cut the fireplaces on. Um, this being an old building, all the light switches are in all different places. So kind of got to know the rhythm of that. But uh, we put out rocking chairs for people. Uh, that way they can enjoy the outside. We have a beautiful downtown area. So we get to put this out. Y'all welcome to go in? Oh, yeah, you, you're welcome. You. Welcome. Y'all been in before, right? I think I reckon. Never, never. Really? Really? Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to Madison Dry Goods. Uh, I saw you on TV. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is uh, the clothing side on this side. The other side's like an old country store. Uh -huh. um, we have some brands in here that only we carry. And then, um, hey, how's it going? Right. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, uh, you know, it's local food items and things like that. So y'all are welcome. And upstairs is a free museum. So you're welcome to go upstairs as well. Super. All right. Thank you. Well, it's nice to have you. All right. I always got to figure out what, which way the arrow is facing. I don't want to send people the wrong way. So we got this. This was made by the previous owner. Give uh, people kind of an idea of uh, the things that we carry inside the store. Got some flags to put out. Another rocking chair. We have rocking chairs outside and inside. Y'all are welcome to take a seat and just stay a while. All right. All right. So the American flag goes first. Just like many general stores uh, back in the day, you put up an American flag, especially here in the South and in Rockingham County, really, here in North Carolina. We love our flag. Sometimes it's hard to reach, but we make it work. This is our state flag. It's, I guess I'm biased a little bit. I think it's the prettiest state flag in the, in the union, I guess they'd say. But shows our form date and when we, when we joined. So. We just got a new one. The last one, I mean, we had out here for probably, I mean, for a while. It was all ragged. We have a local organization here that uh, recycles them. And hey, how's it going? Hey. Um, so Richard, the previous owner, took the, the raggedy one and took it to be recycled, so. All right, let's see, there's another chair. Yeah, we have plenty of people that come out. They like just sitting outside on these rockers. And we got two brand new Amish made ones inside, so. Uh, people can sit on that side, especially when it's cooler outside. It's near the fireplace. Uh, they can sit there, stay warm. And in fact, recently we just uh, opened up a little free library at this location. Uh, we don't have many books yet. The official opening is actually tomorrow. But uh, people can come here, get uh, books for free. They can you know, bring books, drop them off as a donation. Uh, they can sit in the rocking chairs, read. We uh, have coffee that we, that we make every day, um, glass uh, Cokes and Pepsis and things like that that they can get out of the, the refrigerator. Uh, but yeah, so welcome. Alright, All right. then there's one last sign to put out and we'll be officially open for business. So this is one of the signs that we've been putting out for several years, in fact, probably needs to be repainted on that side. Can't hardly read it. But this was uh, filmed in one of the, the ultimate life that was filmed here. Um, if you watch that, in fact, it's free on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie. But you can pick out some of the iconic areas. Uh, one of the close-ups in the film was filmed right here at this front door with this open sign. So you're, uh, when people are walking down the sidewalk, they may not realize they're walking past movie history, but it's right here in my hand. All right, 
we are open. My name is Richard Miller, and I'm the original owner of Madison Dry Goods Company, located here in downtown historic Madison for the last 28 years. Uh, we were very fortunate in 1993 when I was looking for a place to open up that I came to Madison and this building happened to be empty. Looked in and said, well, there's a blank canvas. I can do exactly what I want to do. And that's the history of the 28 years. It's been a great run. Uh, we've been able to make a lot of changes over the years to, to accomplish what we have. And uh, it's been a major draw for downtown and throughout the, the whole area, the Piedmont area. But the building itself is unique. It was built in 1908. Uh, it housed the hardware store from 1908 to 1993. Uh, Hotel Sterling Webster was in here at the same time. And when they closed the, the uh, hotel, they uh, put a funeral service on the second floor. So there's a lot of uh, history steep in this building, from, but it's all original. All the original ceilings, original floors. Uh, it's a great location site. Uh, but my wife and I, Kathy and I, decided we're gonna retire and. Uh, I'm going to be 78 here in, in about a month, and so we were looking around, and, and we were fortunate enough to meet Smitty here about a year and a half ago, and, and he came in and was talking about the love of the building and enjoyed the history of it. We found out he had a great display of the Charlie Lawson family, and uh, which has an integral part to the history of this building. And so as the time went by, and we got to know him a little bit more, and we found out this is the perfect uh, match. So. Now we have the new owner of Madison Dry Goods, and what's, what's interesting about it, uh, I moved in this building in 1993. Smitty was born that year in 1993, <laughs> so you know, so I'm hoping you're going to be here. You know, I was 49 when I came in here, so I want to see how long you're going to keep yeah, this company right. running. I do, do a little bit more than 28 years, huh? Yeah, I, I yeah. think so. You'll be young yeah, enough to do yeah. that. You'll be around to help me out, huh? In, in, in spirit, in spirit, you, you know, in spirit, you can just keep, leave my picture on the wall. Okay? You can say that was a that was the guy that started that thing years ago. So, but anyway, it's 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 a great town to have a business in, and uh, we feel real fortunate that Smitty uh, has uh, taken over what we we have here. And I know he's going to do really well. Uh, he's very progressive in the technology that I, I'm not. When I came here, uh, I had a Polaroid to take pictures of the building on the inside. So things have changed a whole lot, but we couldn't be any happier than to have him as the new owner here. So uh, it's going to go on for years and years. And, and fortunately, we only live a half a mile away, so I can kind of sneak in every once in a while, uh -huh. make sure he's doing okay. Well, but, I've got plans to put security cameras outside. So oh, okay. I, well, I guess I won't be able to come in <laughs> after all. But, but anyway, anyway, we have a great relationship, and, and uh, we really feel that somebody is like, more like our son than uh, a new owner of our business, and that really pleases, and, and we know just in the short period of time that he's got a great future and it's only going to make this place better and enhance it for what we've already done. Is that, is that for your love, I guess, huh? Yeah, Becky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so you got that. And years old. Oh, wow. That's a North Carolina State dog. Oh, is it really? Yes, that's a plot hound. They were born and bred up in the mountains there in uh, Hendersonville and they are born to chase bear, hunt bear. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would have loved to have had him in Iraq in Fallujah because he would have done a good job. Oh, I bet. I so, bet. He looks like a stout boy. 15. Give me one more. We'll call it an even 20. Everybody knew her. I'd go to town board meetings and they'd want to know where she was. Really? Well, you got another one to bring with you now, huh? Well, I'm not on the board anymore, huh? so as a mayor. Yeah. Liam Phillips has got that. So, okay, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, we walk around town and check things out. And well, very cool. I guess you live out. around here, huh? I live on Doll Street. It's the uh, big white house is Marine Corps flags. Okay. Re retired as a full bird colonel. So. Awesome, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. like I said, thank you for your service. Well, you guys were worth it. I miss it every day. Yeah, yeah. So, every day. Hey, it makes it hard to leave, huh? When you like it. It does. Yeah. Cool. Sure it does. Well, we started to carry some of their stuff in the store uh, during the week, too, so uh, right. welcome to stop by, too, and get some from us. Do you want an ice cream, <laughs> Margaret? No. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So just three socks, huh? Yeah. Okay. I've got it mostly written up for you here. Okay. Would you like a copy of your receipt? Uh, sure, why not? All right. Let's print it out for you. Y'all got any big plans today? Oh, we're just going to drive around a little bit and enjoy the sun. Have y'all been to Madison? Y'all been to Madison before, huh? Uh, it's been a while? So 
it's been a long time. Yeah. yeah her uh, father actually used to be the uh, preacher back many years ago at the Presbyterian Church. Really? Uh -huh. Really? And, well, you know, in fact, upstairs in the museum, before y'all head out, y'all should go up there and see it because I, I think I there's some uh, pictures of uh, like previous ministers and stuff up there from that church. Really? So you'll have to check it out. Yeah. That'd be yeah, neat. maybe you'll, I mean, I mean, you probably won't recognize them because they're probably from the, you know, 1800s, but, uh, or the, you know, later 1800s, early 1900s. Right. Get your bag. Yeah, we got some uh, booths upstairs that we're going to start renting out to people for, um, you know, antiques and handmade items and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's all up there. And we've got the Lawson Museum up there as well as the local history museum and the old uh, hotel room mm -hmm. up there. So you have to check it out. That. Yeah. It was nice meeting you. It was nice to meet yeah. you and good luck. Thank you for your service too, by the way. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. We'll see you later. Okay. So, Smitty, so I want to tell you something that you probably already knew or maybe didn't know, but they've used this building several times for movie location yeah. sites. Yeah. And, How many uh, times? Well, there's about six all the time, and uh, some was done on the weekend, so some people locally didn't even know there was anything going on in here. but. It was used for, because of the unique, uniqueness of the building. The first one was information, please. It was a uh, 1950s uh, Reader's Digest story. And uh, they need a country store, and, and they tapped me to be the storekeeper. And my, my granddaughter came in, and my daughter came in. My friend brought some old timey cars and put out front. And, and they liked the store just because of the uniqueness. And then, and then uh, Matt Weiner came in one day with, with a crew, and and uh, kind of surprised me and they said they were looking for a location site and they were looking for an old timey general store for a movie You Are Here and they had some pretty good names, Owen Wilson, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Zach Galpinakis, oh, yeah. Amy Poehler, and of course Matt Weiner just himself and Mad Men was a pretty big deal yeah. to, to come and so they ended up using the uh, using the whole town. They but they didn't it. use you in it, did they? No, no, they didn't use me in it. They just they used a lot of props oh, out okay. of the store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, they used the inside, but mostly up and down the whole town. And uh, they turned it into a modern day Amish town called Ehrenberg. And it was pretty interesting. They uh, had people come in with Amish buggies and such. And then they had another movie called Ultimate Life, which you can actually see on Hallmark right now. It's a prequel to The Ultimate Gift. And Michael Landon Jr. was the uh, producer of it and they they use the front of our store and I think you'll see the open sign if you see that moved yeah. on the front of the store here the but one we put out every day huh? the one you put out every day so that's a famous sign that's right that's the right. open sign so you didn't charge me actually for that though, no, no 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 extra <laughs> charge that came that came with the purchase of the building and and uh, but so I think that Madison itself and the county and, and Madison Drag has been real fortunate to have people come to us to to use it for movie location sites and uh, I think because of the uniqueness of the building and w what we had to offer here fit their fit their needs. Yeah, yeah I was, uh, uh, when they did the um, the one movie, Zero Sum Game by Daniel Stein, uh, we had the country store set up upstairs and I was actually the storekeeper in it and uh, uh, had, a, had a speaking part. And of course, my wife said, uh, I might not want to quit my day job after <laughs> the speaking part, but she felt bad because after she watched it, I got whacked in the movie. I got killed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess that's one way to knock me out of the thing. But that was, uh, that, was a, that was a great movie called Zero Sum Game, like I said, by Daniel Stein. And they didn't close the town down or anything like that. I mean, they used, the, they used mainly the inside of our store and not any of the locations. But uh, so... Uh, so w w what I'm hearing is that we need to have your autograph at the front, huh? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> won't, won't cost you too much, but but uh, but that was a real honor just for any movie uh, uh, company to come to the town of Madison itself in the county. And so, yeah, we feel real pleased that uh, this building continues to be on the forefront of uh, tourism and uh, YouTube uh, situations and uh, just people that come from everywhere around uh, to see the unique store that we have here in Madison. All right, so this is the clothing side, uh, or what is now the clothing side. It used to be a hardware store on this side um, back in its early days, but on the shelves, which are original to the building, uh, 1908 shelves, these are some of my antiques I've collected over probably 20 plus years. I started collecting when I was a kid. Um, I went to yard sales and garage sales and auctions with my mom and my dad, and uh, we would, you know, go and I'd see these old things and I wanted to know what they were about and I started collecting them and th this is kind of where, where it evolved to. Uh, in fact, you know, I've been collecting so long that I've had 
several different storage units. I mean, they're spread out through, through all of uh, my family and friends' storage buildings and garages. And finally, they're mostly in one, one spot. Uh, so uh, on the first few shelves, I tried to make it look like an old country store. And we have, you know, things set up um, that would, could be bought during those times in the early days. Prince Albert, I've seen on some of the videos on uh, the Appalachian Channel, that's actually local. Uh, that's from Winston-Salem, which is, I don't know, about 30 minutes uh, southwest of here. Um, that was made, you know, by R.J. Reynolds. R.J. Reynolds had his big factories in Winston-Salem. And uh, he even was supposed to come and buy a big tobacco warehouse here in Madison but he decided to uh, make his headquarters Winston-Salem, which is kind of where Winston-Salem evolved from. Um, but we have all kinds of things. Some of these things I got when I was young. Um, one of the earliest pieces, I guess, that's on display in here was probably be this clock here. I remember going to a yard sale. I had just got my driver's license. I went to a yard sale and um, it was in, I guess it really wasn't a yard sale, it was in an old building. And I got to go and walk around that old building and they had it super cheap because it doesn't run. It'll run for a few minutes, but it doesn't run continually. And, you know, I bought that and I was, I was proud to bring that home. But um, it's kind of neat because on the back and through the glass, you can see the old newspapers and ads that they would have used um, to advertise the, the clock there. Uh, let's see. A lot of this came with the store. This is an old Madison jersey from uh, a football team that was here in town. That's probably, I would I guess, probably the 30s. Um, uh, then, in fact, uh, Richard uh, was here, uh, the previous owner, when they filmed um, Are You Here, which had Zach Kalifanakis and uh, Owen Wilson in it. And they made our town, Ehrenberg. And a big thing in our town is the town clock you know, capitalized on that and used it in all these banners that they put on all the uh, old poles outside that we still have from the, from the early days. Um, and they even made the town founded in the same year that Madison was founded in. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty neat that, you know, I mean, we've been here for a long time. The store's been here for a long time and I'm glad that, you know, a piece of movie history is inside the store. Kind of blends in well. But uh, also this right here, this old, uh, I guess it's a, what a hay rake, I guess. It uh, was here in the store uh, when it was Penn Hardware. When this building was first built in 1908, next door was built in 1906, that was Busick's department store. And the hardware store down the street needed a bigger building, so they came here, bought the property for a couple hundred dollars, and started building immediately. And this has been hanging you know, in that, in that spot for many, many years. Uh, Penn Hardware was here probably for uh, about 90 years, I guess, and they uh, left that here, and Richard and Kathy left it here for me, so it'll be here until, I guess I'm no longer here, too, so. Uh, this, is, this piece right here is kind of neat. This actually came from Madison. It came from this store here, Pegram and Penn out of Madison. Um, the handle's broke. It's an old tobacco cutter, but, um, you know, I could, I could replace that if I want, but I want to keep it original, um, just, like, just like the store. That looks good up on the shelf. Probably maybe sat there at one time. Let's see. I uh, got some old scales here. The old scale came uh, came with the business. I'm not sure if it, it might be original to the building. Um, I have some other old scales I'm going to be bringing in. Some A lot of the things in here is local. Um, like this pot, um, or this vase, I guess. Um, it came from, uh, it's an old canning jar, probably from Randolph County here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. Um, I found it in an old um, family home. Uh, this lady that I worked with, she wanted to get rid of some of the stuff out of the old house. And you can, you know, see that it's, it's handmade and, you know, it's, it's probably over, over 100 years old as well. So we try to keep everything in here local, you know, pictures of Fort Bragg in North Carolina, a big military base here. Uh, all the old bottles came from somewhere local. Uh, we got some Prince Alberts as well. And, uh, you know, that's, like I said, that came out of Winston-Salem. This is a rare piece. It's a Christmas edition, I guess. You know, people used to give tobacco to uh, 
their family and friends. So, so that came out of Winston-Salem, not too far from here. This old bicycle here, I mean, it's not too old, but it was the first thing that when Richard and Kathy Miller moved into this building, that this was the first thing that was hung up. Uh, Richard would tell the story how he went to this auction uh, of the sale and was able to purchase this, and the guy that he was bidding against, you know, asked him, well, what in the world are you going to do with that old bicycle? He said, well, I'm going to hang it from the ceiling. <laughs> well, the guy thought he was crazy because he said, you're going to hang it from, what do you mean you're going to hang it from the ceiling? But this has been a staple here for 28 years, and I'm glad that Richard and Kathy left it for me. Uh, maybe one day you'll see me riding. I guess I'll have to have somebody to ride with me, but the old mouse that's on it. Uh, <laughs> a customer came in the other day, and she was telling me a story that uh, when it used to be a wholesale business here, that when the kids would start acting, you know, like children and running around and jumping around on the old floors here, she would uh, have hidden this old mouse. And she would tell the kids, hey, go, go try to see if you can find the mouse. So it kept the kids occupied while the parents were shopping. And so I've kind of continued that tradition. And uh, I don't know if anybody's seen it or found it yet, but nobody said anything or screamed or anything like that in the building. I see, we've got some old, uh, that's the sign that they had put up as well. A lot of these things hanging in here on, off the ceiling uh, are some of Richard and Kathy's original collection. Some um, dried tobacco there. This town used to be a, really big into tobacco. And really, I mean, there are a lot of families that still, you know, raise tobacco and sell it. Uh, but the price of tobacco has kind of gone down, so they, uh, it's kind of a dying industry, I guess. But you know, that kind of honors the history of uh, Madison and the tobacco industry here in the Piedmont. And in fact, there used to be uh, so many tobacco plug warehouses here in Madison. There were over 40. And at one time, it was the most in the entire world. And that's why, you know, R.J. Reynolds was thinking about coming in here, you know, buying it up, um, but instead made it in Winston. But that's one reason that on the second floor, they decided to make hotel rooms for the tobacco salesmen. That way they had somewhere to stay when they came, and we'll check that out here in a minute. Another thing I wanted to show you, the old Ray funeral home sign. Um, on the second floor after the tobacco industry kind of died down and the hotel industry wasn't as needed here in our small town, uh, the owner, TB Knight, which you can see his picture down here behind the register, he decided to open up a funeral service. And that ran for, you know, several years. It was here at least in 1916. We've got some records dating back to then and some old advertisements. But uh, he, he ran it for, you know, pretty much his whole duration when he, when he was here up until about the probably 30s or 40s. And then when that kind of died down, some offshoots from our store went down behind us uh, and opened up Ray's Funeral Home. So that's one of the you know, original early Ray Funeral Home signs. The store down the street actually has the sign that points the opposite direction. That probably would have been uh, butted up against it, but you know, that's, a, that's a rare sign, especially for our area. Uh, I've only seen, I thought I had the only one until I went down the street <laughs> and saw the, the one pointing towards my store. So uh, you know, that's a neat piece. Uh, anything funeral home really you know, draws a lot of attention, but that's, that's, that's a neat piece as well. All right, guys, come on up, follow me. We'll go upstairs and I'll show you the old hotel rooms and the history that's upstairs. So besides being a funeral service later in its history, this building housed a hotel. And this building here in town is the only remaining remnant of that time period. And the, we had several hotels in the area, but this is the only one that survives. The second floor would have been the lobby to the hotel. And in fact, if you look close, you can see, um, besides the, the blue marks here, where the, uh, the, the floor used to not be here. It used to be a, a balcony that would have rounded here. So it would have been open to the first floor. This would have been the lobby on the second floor for the, ho for the hotel. The first floor would have been kind of a community space. People could uh, drink, eat, you know, sing, be merry, I guess. But uh, this, this was the original lobby to the hotel. And you probably could have set up here as well because this is a pretty big space for a lobby. Down this hall, this, this space has never been touched before. Um, the paint that you see here is the original paint. Um, the things, some of the things you see on the wall are all local to, to the time period. And then each of these rooms are the original hotel rooms. Again, these rooms have never been touched. Uh, 
the paint is all original. And even you can see the colors, how they used to be, green on the top. And probably at some point, I don't know if the, the pink color, you know, was the base coat or if maybe it, it was pink originally, then, you know, shortly thereafter they painted it this color. But these would have been the hotel rooms that the tobacco salesman would have used to, uh, you know, house and they probably served uh, food downstairs and things like that. Um, each room is set up here just like um, kind of different stages in the building's history. This room um, is the textile room because, you know, besides tobacco, we were also in the textile industry. Uh, we had mills around the area, Avalon Mills that burned down was close by, and each thing in here represents that time period. If we go out, um, you can see the walls, they're kind of that green tone as well. And let's see, down here, this, this room here um, is the largest hotel room that was in existence here. Not only on the second floor did we have hotel rooms, we also had them on the third floor. Uh, this room here would have been the largest, probably the most expensive, and may have housed a few beds in here, not just one. Again, this room has never been touched. You can even see um, the original wood that they would have put the plaster on. The plaster has horsehair integrated into it to give it strength. and. Uh, you know, businessmen flocked not only this area for tobacco, but uh, for the other happenings in the city, or this small town, really, at the time. And probably around the time that this, this hotel was in existence, it, the population in this area might have been, you know, a few hundred. Now we, you know, we're not that much bigger. We have a couple thousand, but, uh, you know, we're kind of spread out. This, this wall here is interesting, too, because you can see it's dirty and it's not dirt it's actually tobacco spit <laughs> so I don't know if the the salesman would just come here and spit wherever they wanted to spit on the walls uh, or if they had you know spittoons lined up here but this is hundred year old spit uh, if you've ever wanted to see that before um, this room here uh, also represents kind of a country kitchen things that would have been common in the time period uh, for a uh, kitchen. Of course, you know, here at this building, I'm not sure, I don't think we had uh, running water and stuff like that at the time, so they probably had uh, buckets and stuff that they would use, but this room shows, you know, the, kind of what a, a kitchen would have looked like in the area. We were a small town, it probably, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, we sold tobacco here, but um, as you can see, it's, it's pretty bare, but you had all the necessities that you needed. Uh, probably a stove, um, and then that would have been probably about it. This room represents the funeral home that was here. Uh, we've got a portable embalming table in here. That picture of that gentleman there is another picture of TB Knight. And you can see he was a quite classy man. Uh, I guess when you have a hardware store and a hotel and a funeral home all as one, you've probably one of the most wealthy men in town. But this room represents that time period and its history. Then the next room and the last room that we have here represents the hardware store. The hardware store was here uh, from the very first day that this uh, building was open up until uh, about, well, about 90 years later, I guess and they decided at the time that this space was kind of, this building was too old, old looking for them, so they moved right next door and they continued that business up until a few years ago. But this represents, you know, what would have been sold at the time, you know, chairs, um, I mean, anything that you could think of was probably sold at a hardware store. And even caskets, that's kind of how the funeral, you know, service got started here is that the you know, in hardware stores at the time, they would sell uh, coffins. So, you know, if you have the coffins, you might as well have a funeral home. <laughs> um, and then all this, these displays here talk about local history. We have some newspapers, um, you know, old uh, ledgers. This, uh, this price tag right here for a baby robe came from next door when it was Busick's department store. This building's full of history and it, uh, you know, we hope to keep it going for a while. So you like hats, huh? We got plenty. Yeah, yeah that's a, that is we a really got plenty. nice hat. Yeah. The sweat no, with the leather. Is yeah. Awesome.
Yeah, we. That's one of our. In fact, the kind of the off or the burnt brown one over there. Yeah. The burnt orange over there is our best seller. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to come back and get one of those because. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely coming back. <laughs> well, I, I like that yellow one too. Yeah, the yellow ones are really nice. But the, uh, the the green stuck out to me the most today. Right. Yeah, still doing the handwritten receipts, you man. Take, you do take a card, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared to get worried because I think I got like $3 in cash. No, no. We still do that. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's about the only uh, modernized thing here is that, yeah. that and the surround sound for the, right, for the music. Right. But anyway. Well, it's awesome. Like yeah. I said, I hadn't been in years. And, uh, You've tried these noodles before? I haven't. But that. Everybody, <laughs> let me tell you, people come. Just for these noodles, right, right. Uh, Smith Miller's noodles, and in fact, Richard would tell you if he were here that they're even better the next day. They don't really? get like you know nasty and soggy yeah. and all that. So. Well, I, I love the spinach, and then uh, the ba I love basil too. So yeah, I spinach to, is my favorite. I got to, my I had to try both of them. And pickled okra, you can't beat that. Yeah, I love pickled okra. Yeah, anything with Miss Mary's too. We saw a ton of that. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff back here. I got to come back and get. I don't want to overcharge you for this bag. Uh, did you see a price on the other one? How uh, much was I think it, it says 69. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, sometimes I mean, you know, we don't we don't have a digital system with everything in it, uh, yeah. like inventory, so we have to do the handwritten labels and everything on them. So I got you. Have you still got the uh, got some stickers too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of those stickers we got? In fact, there's one up there that I didn't. I don't think that one's up there, but that's also there. Okay. Talking I'm about the Mayo one. River. Uh, I'm gonna take one of those. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? I like to add with my suburban out there. Uh, well, it's cool because I mean, you can look through here. I mean, it's the same ones that are over okay. there, but if you wanna look through there and yeah, pick you out some some good ones. And those are all, you know, most of those are talking about local stuff. So yeah. That's why we like them. You ain't that's taking. Like okay. Cool deal. Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put these in uh, these in a little bag for you okay. so that way they don't get bent or anything like that. That'll work. Appreciate it. Yeah. All righty. Start bagging this up so I don't get confused here. That's all right. I'll put this in a bag for you. Try to put all the glass products in bags so that way if they're rolling around and all that, they don't break, yeah. break on you. Good call. Nothing wrong with that. I've only been up there a couple of times anyway. Really? Most of the time I go to Floyd County up in Virginia. That's, yeah. That's yeah. where I'll go. A little okay. closer too. Yeah. You go up to the Floyd General Store up there? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Uh, most of the time um, I used to go to the one that closed. Uh, I think it was called Floyd Hardware. That was the one I went to most of the time. But that general store just won an award I seen the other day for, a, I think it said best, voted best restaurant in uh Blue Ridge Mountains. Really? Something for 2023. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, that. I mean, that's kind of what we want to replicate upstairs. Yeah. I don't know if you've been upstairs lately, but we opened up this old um, funeral home room. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're wanting to do is kind of play bluegrass music up yeah. there and, you know, oh, yeah. do some events oh, and stuff be, up there. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Something we don't that'd have. Be, that would be so. awesome. I ain't done that kind of stuff around here in a while. Yeah, we can hold about, about 60 people up in that room. So. Huh. That's right, that's right. <laughs> All right, 164.25. Right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That way you don't lose it. Yeah, it don't, it don't matter, man. All righty, buddy. All right. Well, we appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. We'll see you much. around. Yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll have to look you up in that yearbook. Yeah, yeah, let yeah, me I'm up. Sure. I, I'm pretty sure we, I think we had a class, but I, maybe maybe not. I don't well, know. Maybe we did. Who knows, man. The stickers in this bag? Yeah, right okay. there. Yep. Perfect. I'm going to go add them to the ride right now. All righty, buddy. We'll see you later. Thanks we'll for coming. Thanks. So we'll step up these stairs, I'll take you to the general store side. This side used to be um, kind of like the community area for the hotel upstairs, but we've replicated it to be uh, an old general store. Things in here, all the furniture really came from locally, so all these pieces are old handmade furniture items locally. In fact, this table that's right here came from just up the street in Stonebull at the old Coca-Cola and uh, factory, Pepsi-Cola factory. In fact, it still has the original Pepsi-Cola uh, drink popper on there. So 
that's still there. Uh, all the, or really a lot of the food items in, on this side are uh, local items, things that are made within probably 20 or 30 miles of where we are now. Um, old Mill, uh, we have Old Mill flour that comes from Guilford County. Uh, this honey here comes from Reedsville, which is just up the road. We've got things from Germington. All, all these areas are within, you know, probably 15 or 20 minute drive. Back here, we have the old counter with uh, another old cash register when it gets really busy, especially on the weekend and during uh, the winter season for Christmas. We'll have somebody stationed back here so we can bring people up back here as well. Used to have a deli on this side uh, for a short period. Uh, we hope to open that back up to be able to, you know, serve people uh, maybe bologna sandwiches and, um, you know, maybe uh, banana and uh, peanut butter sandwiches, things that like Elvis loved. But uh, yeah, this side's pretty cool. Even on, on the, the wall there, we had a local artist come in and they painted things talking about uh, local history here. It's got a map. We're super close to Virginia, so you can kind of see the boundary line that runs through Virginia. And then things here talk about local uh, structures and buildings that we have here. One thing I wanted to show you is on the other side, the clothing side. And it's a pretty cool feature where um, history is actually embedded into the floor. So we'll step on this side, and if you could imagine when this building first opened in 1908, you know, there were other counters that would have been in this building. One of them would have been here. And what T.B. Knight, uh, the original owner of this building, did was he stood in the exact same spot for probably 30 years. And you can see actually his footprints here in the floor. And if I were to move this case, you can actually stand exactly in the footsteps of the original owner of the store. You can feel his, uh, probably where he was rocking back and forth and his old shoes and heels just dug into uh, the old wood there. So we hope to be able to put a picture of him up and make it where it's interactive, where kids and other uh, people that come visit the store can actually stand in the founder's footsteps. So stay tuned for part two. John's going to be making a video that's devoted entirely to the Lawson family murders and its connection to this building here um, in Madison. They happened in Germington, but they brought them here, and uh, we'll be able to explain more about that in part two. I'm so happy that you watched this episode uh, on the Appalachian Channel, and I hope that you'll come visit me here in Madison, North Carolina, here in Rockingham County. We're not the only store downtown. Uh, we're probably, you know, one of the most well-known, but we have other well-known uh, businesses here. Just across the street, we have some uh, stores, we have some restaurants nearby, and now we're part of a social district. So you can, uh, you know, we have bars and wineries, we have a meadery that's pretty rare in this area. You're welcome to come down, you know, get a drink, and you can bring it right in front of the store and sit in our rocking chairs and enjoy yourself here in town. Uh, you can visit the museum, it'll be free. Uh, it's free every day. Uh, we're closed on Sundays, but you're more than welcome to come by and uh, enjoy seeing the, all the customers that come in, our friends and family that come in. Uh, they'll sit down and talk with you for a while, and we'll, we'd love for you to come by and introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and sign our guest book here. We have a guest book that all our guests from around, not only the country, but around the world. We've had uh, international guests from Japan and China and, I mean, everywhere. So uh, it's not too far away from where you're at, I can assure you, and we'd love to have you uh, come, come see us here in Madison. It's an easy fix, 27.29. All right, and the sound of success there. for you. And you want your receipt? I do. Hey, it's a famous handwritten receipt right there. Don't see them no more. Be, be worth some money one day. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, John. Thank you.